Hey guys, StuDog here, and welcome back to another edition of the Yu-Gi-Oh! Top 10 decks of the format. So with a new ban list, here we go again, May 2018 format ban list just got revealed a few days ago. And this will be the top 10 decks as well going in national season, so you pretty much already know what's going to be at the top here. But it seems like over the past years of just doing this segment, whenever ban list comes out, it seems that the top 5 decks are extremely easy to come up with. Anyone can come up with a top 5, and it's always the bottom 5 that are the hardest to come up with and create the most controversy but without further ado here's my list I'm still gonna keep it top 10 I know I could be lazy and just do it top 5 because I mean again the bottom 5 is just extremely hard to, to number in rank but without further ado here we go starting out number 10 I gotta go with True Draco now again a lot of people saying this deck is completely dead and it's garbage and then there's other people saying that wait a second we got stuff back you got the dynamite knight back you got two more ignis heats back you still got three anti-spell you still got three card of demise you still got three dragonic diagram you still got all the floodgates in the world i mean this deck isn't dead i've seen this deck win plenty of games in the past without using masterpiece whatsoever i mean yeah you, you lose your two copies of masterpiece assuming that your main deck in like just two and you, you also get stuff back, so I mean, it's not like you had to really think of new cards to put in, because you just take out the two masterpieces and you put in like the Ignis Heat and the Dynamite Knight or something along the lines of that. I mean, yeah, you still only got one return, but again, it seems like it still could be a very good anti-meta and deck. Now, if Demise would have got hit and Dragonic Diagram would have got hit, now, no way this would be on the top 10 list. But I mean, you still got those Flood Gates, and it seems like Kunami, they still refuse to hit card Demise, I mean, after all these years. And yeah, there you go, so... There it is, True Draco. Still want to put it in the top 10. Do I know where it's going to be in the top 10? Not really, but um, number 10 seems like a good start and it should be very interesting to see. You know, this deck really is going to be just completely dead going into the next regionals next weekend and the YCS in New Jersey. That's going to be in early June. Or um, maybe it will sneak in there and get a couple spots. Alright, so going on to number 9, I gotta give it to Paleozoic Frog. So, this deck has been consistently topping regionals ever since it came out. It won back to back YCSs. I mean, it has the precedence of being a very good and consistent deck. This deck doesn't really have that many bad consistency issues. I mean, you could tech in the Spellbook Engine and do all that fun stuff. You got your Link Monster, you got Mastar Boy, you still got three totally awesome. Yeah, I don't think they're ever gonna hit totally awesome now. And again, it's a really good stun, anti meta control deck. And still worthy of being in the top 10 in my opinion has been topping regionals lately like i said it's been topping regionals topping ycs's ever since it came out in late 2016 going on to number eight i got to give it to abc's now believe it or not i actually didn't put abc's in the top 10 decks for last format and i really should have because they still have been consistently topping ycs's and regionals i mean ever since this deck has ever came out again it's kind of like they came around they came out around the same time as paleozoic frogs late 2016 and again, it's been a big force. The boss monster is just insane. You can go for link summons easily now, like the underclock taker, and get your searches and do that. They still got all their support cards at three. And again, they lost Ancient Fairy Dragon. That was only like one build of the deck that was even playing the Ancient Fairy Dragon stuff. So you can still play like a, a stun and control build of ABCs, which is kind of like what I like to play. But other than that, still a very powerful and good deck, in my opinion. And worthy of being in the top 10 i mean they've been they got three top spots at the last ycs and consistently been getting a couple top spots at ycs's and regionals ever since this deck has ever came out so going on to number seven gotta give it the pendulum dot decks so whether it be just metaphos or zephras or even just regular pendulum magician and hearing people saying the pendulum magicians aren't really dead even though you can't really do that astrograph loop and the ftk is dead and stuff like that but other than that it seems like whenever you hit a pendulum deck they always find a way to be good again remember after that first adjusted list with pepe and they still were good and you know they evolved in draco pals and stuff like that and even when a last ban list where they ban the skull Corbett joker it's still you know the best deck of the format and stuff like that so it seems like whenever you hit pendulum decks they find a way to be good again you know Zephra has been consistently topping YCS's like the past three YCS's I believe they've gotten top spots along with Metaphos and of course you still got your Link Monster at three that was untouched in the balance so you got to give Pendulum.dex some credit for um, just the regional and YCS top spots they've been getting going on number six got to give it a Mech Knight Invoked again a very 
probably the best build of Invoked. I know um, when the Link format first started, people were playing Invoked with the scapegoats and the Droll and Lockbirds and stuff to try to go for the win. And then when the Mech Knights came out, you just realized it was just such a better engine just because they're conveniently light, so you can go for your number one fusion, go for the Mechaba. And along with that, um, it has a lot of spammy power. Just the Mech Knights can come out of nowhere and just OTK, and it makes it just a lot more consistent and a lot more better of an engine it's kind of like two engines just thrown into one because i mean the invoked engine has been played in just a lot of other stuff randomly and along with the mech knights like mech knights are not only played and just invoked i mean i've seen other decks just splashed around so it's just it's kind of funny how, like two engines just get splashed together to just make a very good solid deck and again this has been consistently topping ycs's and regionals for the past months now so you gotta put this in the top 10 going on to i believe this is number five gotta give it to nightmare spiral so again you got three power cards limited at one on the ban list and out of nowhere where out of nowhere it seems spirals are making a huge comeback i mean spiral super agent now is twenty dollars a week ago it was ten dollars now it's twenty dollars it's doubled in price because i remember doing that market watch video a week ago and it seems like just the combos with this deck have just been real lately i've seen a lot of people on dueling book play this deck and the high rankings and have a lot of success with it and again it should be really interesting um how many spirals are actually because i remember the past ycs's there were like no spirals anywhere in sight but it seems like ever since the release of flames of destruction this deck really has been having a comeback with the nightmare engine and again it seems like it's a lot more consistent and spammy now and we'll just have to see how many top spots spirals actually get at the next ycs because if it if it flops if it flops and see the spiral super agent going down in price like it always does it always goes up and then it goes down it's like seriously just make up your mind already but um again untouched on the bit well they technically lost the ancient fairy dragon which kind of sucks but again like losing the ancient fairy dragon isn't really like the end of the world for a lot of these decks to play field spells and stuff so uh whatever going on to number four we're gonna give it to tricksters again untouched on another list yay the last YCS in Chile, they got the third most top spots, believe it or not. And again, it's, it's Tricksters, and we all know how this deck works and functions now. Very consistent. A lot of people wanted Reincarnation to get hit, or the Field Spell to get hit. And that's just not the case. And, I mean, less and less people are really playing it just because of the other stuff just being so good. But, if, of course, Tricksters have been known for, like, the past year now, ever since they've been released, to just be... A very dominant force in the meta and a very solid consistent deck for sure going to number three gotta give it to goki nightmare so this deck has just been everywhere lately topping a whole bunch of regionals the past weekend and uh the hype has been real i mean you got cards like junk forward and the random butter spy going up to like seven to ten dollar cards like which is just crazy man cards that were going for peanuts like a few weeks ago or just been skyrocketing and again the new goki support and flame destruction is very good and again whenever you, it's just a very consistent deck it's spammy it's consistent because whenever you go for the link somebody get the free search as well and the nightmare engine has just been really helping out this deck as well and i've been seeing it everywhere on dueling book lately so again goki nightmares are projected to do really well in the up and coming format along with brandish so here is brandish also known as sky strikers not technically out yet in the tcg of course it's actually the first time ever in my entire life of doing this segment where i included a deck that wasn't out in the tcg because i don't like doing it because i haven't really been seeing um of course you don't really get to see how it's been doing at regionals and ycs's and stuff along the lines of that but everyone is projecting this deck to do very very well and the only reason i couldn't put it number one is because it's not technically out yet in the tcg but number one has to go with alter guys just right now with the other decks getting hit because this had a terrible true draco matchup and assuming that true draco and masterpiece is gone that just makes alter guys just that much better and it's a very consistent deck being able to play in your opponent's turn abuse that multi-faker with a personal spoofing and bring out you know whenever you want to go for you can bring out the level one floater guy and the next turn link summon get a search and you can go for otks with the the hexia of course I believe there's like some combo where you can get like 7700 points of damage and stuff like that and just make multi fakers the, the heart and soul of this deck now and it's just it's crazy you can put your opponent in just big conundrums bringing out their their kieran guy on your opponent's turn and bouncing their stuff bouncing back the multi faker and it's just it's crazy how just one card can make this deck just so good and now with pendulum quote unquote out of the picture ftk is out of the picture and of course 
masterpiece and true drake goes out of the picture i mean it just makes this deck just so much better it should be very interesting what will actually be the best deck once um this gets released in a couple of weeks but anyway this should be the meta that you should be expecting to see going into the next regionals and ycs in new jersey in early june and of course nationals which i believe is in texas so congratulations to anyone who got their nationals invite and will be attending that high skill event and yeah this should really be your meta you should be looking forward to like i said the top um six decks are pretty easy to come out with just mech nine evokes i gotta put it as the weakest out of these just from all the play i've been seeing with spirals lately just um i don't know tricksters technically a little better just because it seems like the past ycs as they get more spots than mech nine invoked and of course this deck has just been everywhere lately online and everyone's projecting brandish to do really well and it just um, by far the most played deck I've been seeing lately has been um, Altergeist and they've been topping just a whole bunch of regionals lately so anyway it should, it should be really really interesting looking forward to uh, what's going to win the next YCS and what's going to win nationals leave your thoughts in the comment section below and that's all I got to say about this video guys so thank you all for watching as always and until next time this has been Stew Dog, and I'm signing out